Um, all right. Can anyone tell me what season we are in right now, other than it being summer? Advent, Advent yes. Anyone else? Summer, yes. Definitely agree with that. I'm a bit warm up here. Christmas, Christmas thank you. That's what I'm going for. Otherwise, we would have been here all day. We've been going around. It's basketball season. It's a wabbit season. It's Christmas season. And believe it or not, Christmas is a big deal. For those of us in the church, of course, Christmas is all about the birth of the one we call Lord. Jesus of Nazareth, born in Bethlehem, saviour to all, hope for creation, peace for humankind, joy to the world, love in human form. Christmas is about Jesus and that is why Christmas is a big deal. But even if you didn't know anything at all about Jesus, the impression you get, particularly in the West, is that Christmas is a big deal. We kind of go a bit Christmas crazy, don't we? And what's one step back from crazy? It's passionate. And I can tell you who, as a people, who are really passionate about Christmas. And that's the Finns, as in those who come from Finland, not those who have Finns. There's a city in Finland called Torku. Anyone been to Finland? It's down the bottom. It used to be the capital city before Helsinki, but the city of Torku, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce it four different ways this morning, but that's how I've got it written down. It's down the bottom of Finland. And they have a Christian tradition that has been going on almost unbroken for 700 years. I mean, we all think we have Christmas traditions in our family that have been going on forever, don't we? But it doesn't stack up anywhere near what they do in the city of Torku. And what they do there is every Christmas Eve at 12 noon, there is a declaration made from this beautiful big mansion right in the heart of the city in the Great Square. It's a proclamation of the Christmas peace. It actually looks like this, and, and kids actually have one. They actually can decorate. And I would say to adults, you could do one too, but I want you to pay attention here. But Perhaps the kids could do one for you, a, a proclamation of Christmas peace. And this declaration, what it does, it serves as a reminder to all the people um, that we should be spending this holiday time in peace and harmony, but it also threatens offenders with harsh punishments should you break the peace, and then it finishes off by wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. The proclamation actually reads, this is an English translation, like this. Tomorrow, God willing, is the graceful celebration of the birth of our Lord and Saviour and thus is declared a peaceful Christmas time to all. By advising devotion and to behave otherwise quietly and peacefully, because he who breaks this peace and violates the peace of Christmas by any illegal or improper behaviour shall, under aggravating circumstances, be guilty and punished according to what the law and statutes prescribe for each and every offence. Finally, a joyous Christmas feast is wished to all inhabitants of the city. Christmas is a big deal and you better not mess with the peace of Christmas if there are fins around or you'll be in trouble. But what a great way to usher in Christmas with a proclamation, a reminder that Christ is coming and that he brings peace into the world. And if you want to hear it, you can actually now log on the internet and live stream the proclamation of Christmas. You just need to get your time zones right. Last Sunday, we began our Christmas series and, and Tamara... Um, gave us a, a message about hope, finding hope in uncertainty. And she did this by looking at the hopeful and hope-filled stories of Simeon and Anna, faithful to the last, waiting for
for the promised arrival of God with us. And so as we venture through this series, we're going to be using people from the, the bigger story of Christmas as a launch pad to rediscover God's heart for us at Christmas time. And so this week, we're going to look at the shepherds, those who perhaps best represent um, peace as we know it in the Christmas story. But before we dig into their tale, let us pray. Almighty God, these uh, shepherds who were the most unlikely recipients of your message of peace, but Lord, we are so glad you came to them. We find in their story a reflection of our own. It gives us hope and peace to know that you gave them the good news of great joy and that you do the same for us. Lord, as we reflect upon your word today, may that which comes from you change us and may that which comes just from me be forgotten. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke and it's the day of the birth of of Jesus. It's chapter 2 verses 8 to 20 and because we've had such a variety of of faces and voices on the platform this morning I thought we'd carry that on into the Bible reading. So this morning's Bible reading is read to you by Sir David Suchet over a clip from The Chosen. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, A great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. This is God's birth announcement to the world. Still the original and the best gender reveal pyrotechnics ever. No pink or blue smoke here, but a sky full of angels lighting up a starry night in Bethlehem. The New Living Translation calls them the armies of heaven, It's hard to imagine just how magnificent and terrifying and glorious a sight that must have been. And to think the message is given to shepherds, not to kings and prime ministers, not to news anchors and reporters live on the scene, but to lowly shepherds out in the field at night just doing their job. Have you ever wondered what it would have been like? Have you ever tried to put yourself in the shoes of the shepherds and then wondered how you would respond to such an appearance, such an announcement coming from the heavens? Because I think if we reflect upon the shepherds and upon they, the way they responded to the message they were given, then perhaps we can get a few insights into our own connection with and experience of God's peace that comes at Christmas. The first thing we can listen, we can can, uh, realise is that peace comes in the midst of our storms. 
as the news anchors began the skit this morning and gave us all that bad news, it was though they were actually reading the headlines from the news, not a script that Tamara had written particularly to be performed this morning. Bushfires, floods, hails, COVID and all its Greek alphabetized variants. This is coming from our lived experience. This is not a worst case apocalyptic drama. But peace comes in the midst of our storms. Has anyone here ever lived through a cyclone? See a nod there? Now, I love a good thunderstorm. I love the last few days of the week with all those thunderstorms. One thing I miss living here is getting lots of thunderstorms on the mainland as a kid. But you know what? I'm not sure I would cope living through a cyclone. But did you know that in the centre of one of these massive storms is a moment of peace? And it's called the eye. And when the eye of the storm passes directly overhead, the wind cease, the sky brightens, and peace reigns. But it's only temporary. Because when the eye passes, the winds resume now in the opposite direction with all the ferocity that they had before. So let me ask you this. How's your Christmas season going so far? How does Christmas normally look for you and your family and your friends and your neighbours? If we're honest, many of us might choose the word like hectic, busy, frantic, to describe our lives at this time of year, or maybe even all year round. Maybe it's an overloaded schedule that robs us of our sense of God's peace. Or maybe it's something more, maybe it's relational conflict, pressure at work, or a lost job, or an undiagnosed illness. You name it, we have plenty of options today for things that cause us stress. For many of us, peace sounds like something that is a long way off. It's a good idea, it's a a nice thought for the holiday, something we long for, but we don't really expect it to happen. Is that where you find yourself today? If it is, let me encourage you that Jesus is there in the midst of the storm. This is is where Jesus shows up. He is there with us when love seems lost and we can't see where our next step should be. And this is the kind of situation into which God births the Christ child. In the middle of an upside down world for an unmarried Jewish couple who have found themselves at the center of cosmic events while at the same time trying to walk across a country on foot to do what the government tells them they have to do and be counted. And then Mary has to go through childbirth, uh, away from her support structure, away from her, her mother and her aunties who would have been there for her during childbirth. It's into this stormy space that the angels show up and proclaim good news to the shepherds, who in the middle of Israel's dark, stormy night of Roman oppression and centuries of suffering and wondering have been crying out, where is God? And in all these circumstances, in all of these struggles, this is where God shows up. And this is where God continues to show up for us today. In our fear, in our pain, in our confusion, in our grief, in our loss, in our uncertainty. Now, I don't know every hardship that you are facing today. I don't know every wince of pain that you may be experiencing, but God does. And if you are open to it, God will bring peace to calm your heart, to calm your soul. A peace that defies our circumstances. 
Now, that's great for you to say. It sounds nice, you might be thinking. But you don't know how much it hurts. And you're right. I don't. I can only imagine how awful it is. I can only agree with you how unfair it may seem. But let me encourage you that there is a peace that is deeper. There is a peace that defies your circumstances. No, in the face of all that you are feeling and all that you have gone through, God's peace doesn't make sense. But it's real. And it's healing. And it can guard your heart from continuing wounds. It can protect your mind from the onslaught of anxiety. It can be like then living always in the eye of the storm as wind rages around you, yet sensing the peace of God with you. In what we could maybe call our verse for the year, we've come across it so many times, Paul writes it like this. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say it, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let me encourage you today that no matter what you are facing, that this process begins with us turning to God, bringing our hurts and our questions and our doubts and our whys and our needs to Him. As Paul said it, in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And in whatever situation you're facing, find something to rejoice in. Find something to be thankful for, even if it's only the fact that you can cry out to God. Because when everything seems dark, when the storm is raging, when you can find that one glimmer of hope, that one light on the horizon, the power of peace begins. Now, I don't fully pretend to understand it, but there is a power in prayer and a transformation that grows from genuine gratitude. It's not the power of getting what we want or convincing God to see things our way. We can try and God will listen. But much more than that, the power of prayer happens in the experience of peace as our perspective changes and finds an understanding that God is with us no matter what. And an acknowledgement and acceptance that God's got this. That God can be trusted. That God is enough. Because ultimately, peace is a person. It all comes back to Jesus. He is our peace. Paul said to the church in Ephesus, for he himself is our peace. And long before his arrival on earth, the prophet Isaiah, who this morning we were lucky enough to see on the big screen, called Jesus the Prince of Peace. In case you've forgotten what he said, let's have a little of a listen. I'm here live with Isaiah. He says he has a word from God. What is it, Isaiah? For a child is born to us, a son given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord and heaven's armies will make this happen. Now they are political sounding words. And you can understand why the Jews who wanted their freedom and their independence from the oppression of Rome were eager to find this militaristic political Messiah. And yet, you can also hear in Isaiah's words 
tones of the completion of Christ's work and his establishment of God's great kingdom. But most of all, that this child is born, that this son is given to us, brings the power and the rule of his peace into our lives. Jesus is the embodiment of God's shalom, God's peace, God's wholeness that we only find when we are in relationship with him. And Jesus is the one who was sent to be with us, to show us the way, and he offers us this invitation for this Advent season, for this Christmas season, and always. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened and stressed out and frantic about the Christmas season ahead, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Is that not an offer of peace? Let me encourage you to take those words with you into the week. Reflect upon them. Let them wash over you. Accept Christ's offer of peace. And so in this first week of December, in this second week of Advent, let me encourage you to look out for the Prince of Peace. Even when the winds blow and the storms swell around us. Let me encourage you to come to him and worship like the shepherds. Even when we find ourselves battling the storms of our world. Let me remind us all to come to him because he he is here. The Prince of Peace is with us and He will make all things well. May Jesus be your peace this week, guarding your soul with peace, filling your spirit with the wholeness of shalom and ruling as the Prince of Peace in your heart. Let us pray. Almighty God, we can't help but know that Christmas is a big deal in our world today. But we believe that beyond the trees and the gifts and the lights, it is your peace that transcends our understanding, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, that is the biggest of big deals. Lord, as the storms of the Christmas season threaten to take our focus away from you, grant us your peace that we may rise in confidence and with one voice sing it to the darkness, the light has come. And the storms of life look at what the Lord has done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us at worship this morning. Thank you, Phil and Naomi and the team, for leading us on the platform. But as we go, a benediction of peace. Let us be a people of peace. Let peace live in our hearts. Let us share the peace of Christ with all that we meet. Share peace by acting out of compassion and not fear. Share peace by listening to all sides of the story. Share peace by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel and share peace. And as you go into the wonder of God's creation, share peace and hope with all that you meet. Amen.